Hey everybody, how's it going? My name is James Del Vecchio and I'm going to show you how I made these beautiful mahogany sconces. I get the here. <laughs> Stay tuned and I'll show you how. So, uh, I apologize for not having the footage of, of cutting the actual wood, but um, here's a dramatic reenactment <laughs> that uh, basically just took 1x4 material and cut it into two pieces and got uh, one of them was about 12 inches, the other was about 4 inches. And did that three times, ended up with six pieces, three of the 12 inch and three of the 4 inch. And then once I got those all cut, I sanded them up to, uh, I believe it was 320 grit with the palm sander. Sanded all, all sides, all faces, except for the backs of the ones that go against the walls. Didn't put the long ones there. Like smooth. Depending on what you're hanging from these, you want to make sure it's wide enough to accommodate whatever you're hanging. So if you have a, in my case, a three and a quarter inch circle basically that you're hanging you don't want to cut yourself short and then have this you know be be hanging like this right you feel what I'm saying all it's gonna be holding is this bird cage that my wife got from a uh, I believe she got it from Michaels and uh, I don't know how much they are but I know my wife and she probably got it on clearance or something because if she buys anything from Michael, she makes sure she gets a coupon for it or gets it on clearance. So I'm going to be hanging these just like this. And the hook that I'm using, will only, I'm hoping will only let it go about that far down. That's another thing you want to account for too. Where are you going to place this? Because if you go too far, then your, your, whatever you're hanging is going to hang below this. And I don't think it'll look nice. So make sure you account for that. But this should look like this in the end. So one of my favorite people to follow on YouTube, it goes by the name of David Picciuto, and um, I don't know what his channel's called. I think it's just David Picciuto. Oh, the Drunken Woodworker. That's right. Um, he has a video where he uh, he has what he calls his new favorite finish, and um, he uses shellac and denatured alcohol. So once I get everything all sanded up to the, the grit that I wanted, in this case it was 400 grit, I just uh, I applied the finish. And the first coat that you see me putting on here, uh, pretty thick, was just straight shellac. And I just just soaked it in a, or I, I uh, soap, what do you call it? <laughs> a shop rag, those blue, really strong uh, paper towels, which I really don't like. I think I'm going to get rid of those and go back to the regular old bounties which I, I just don't like the blue ones because they seem to leave a lot of blue like uh, little lint hairs everywhere whatever but these you can see these cutoffs that I just put down were actually from this material that I cut off the ends um, I didn't show it in this video but um, they were mitered on the ends and I got the wood at a cheap price because of it and uh, yeah, it's, it's mahogany, so it's real expensive, but I got it I got it for a good price, so I, I couldn't pass it up. But anyways, um, just just layering on a real th thick coat at first. And uh, you can see I switched to using an old t-shirt because the rag, uh, or not the rag, but the shop towel was just, just wasn't cutting it. And uh, then after I, after I let it dry, I just got my, made myself a little sanding block with some 400 grit sandpaper. Uh, and you could probably use a palm sander instead of using, uh, you know, a sanding block to do it all by hand. And you probably don't have to use 400 grit. If you wanted to, you can just use 320. Uh, but this is what I used for half of it anyways. I got tired of it after a while. Uh, so then, uh, yeah, I kind of went out of order here. But um, I repeated this process three times, or I'm sorry, about five times. Uh put a real th put a coat on of the shellac and then sanded it and then shellac sand shellac sand 
you can see me here sanding with 400 grit after after it dried. Um, I guess this wasn't out of order. Yeah, so this is the first this is the first sanding right here. And uh, yeah, just hitting it with the sanding block. Like I said, you could you could use the palm sander. Not a big deal. And uh, yeah, I'm just talking here about how uh, the stuff dries really fast. And uh, how was I having any issues having any issues sanding it? And talking about sanding with the grain as well. But that that worked out pretty good. That little block sander. I said I went I went through half the process using that. And with these pieces right here, um, I didn't finish the back side because it's going to go against the wall. And when I was all done, I actually took some, uh, I don't know, it was 220 grit sandpaper to the back. You can see right there where it's just all, it's all, it's all dirty looking and uh, clean that up. But here's the uh, second coat I put on and I put this on a little thinner and I did cut back that shellac with a little bit of denatured alcohol and I didn't show it on the video, but uh, I didn't have like an exact science to it. I just kind of eyeballed it. I probably put like, you know, I don't know. Gosh, I had about, I don't know, half a cup of uh, shellac. And I probably did a little bit less than a quarter cup of denatured alcohol. I don't know what that ratio is. I suck at math. But... Uh, yeah, this like I said earlier, this stuff dries really quick, so be careful and uh, get it on there and let it dry. Get it on there and just let it sit. And I found myself coming back around uh, to the first piece, you know, where I first started and it was already dry. Um, and here I am using uh, steel wool, and I use the triple uh, zero steel wool. I probably could have went up a, a, a little bit finer and. Uh, I, I did show a package of it in in, in the beginning uh, of this little clip here, <clears throat> but um, yeah, that's what I use. And I put a, I put a mask on there because I was kind of getting scared of those fibers. But just sent it all these, kind of just scuffed it up, got the shine off, um, and I only did this at the last step. So this was after I did like four coats or five coats or something. So right before you go to the next process, you want to use the steel wool. All right, so now that you've taken your steel wool, wool or your really fine abrasive pad to the last coat, um, get some wax. Now in David's video, he was using Brie wax. And to be completely honest with you, when I went to the store to buy this stuff, I totally forgot about the Brie wax. Um, when I was going to get this stuff right here, Let's see if you can actually see that. I'm a one man operation here, so it's kind of, I can't see what you're seeing right now. So, uh, unless I go behind the camera, but you can find this stuff, the shellac, like just about anywhere. In fact, I believe they sell it at Walmart even, and it's not that expensive. I'm not sure about the denatured alcohol, but, uh, you can go just about anywhere and get this stuff. It's not terribly expensive. The Brie wax on the other hand, that is a little bit more spendy. And I would have got some had I remembered, but I forgot and I do have on hand some paste wax. Now, I don't know if this is going to work or not. I'm assuming it's still going to work. Um, and besides, it has imported carnauba. I mean, come on. Let's try. So, as I said uh, in the video, I wasn't quite sure about this. Uh, paste wax um, but I mean it, it's wax right so if we're gonna give it a shot and uh, see where we go and this little idea right here I've seen on David's video where he took his palm sander to a shirt and I, I've never seen that before so I thought it was kind of ingenious pretty cool little technique and, and at first <laughs> I had I had left the sanding disc on 
but it was over the shirt, so I'm I'm sure it was okay. But you can see me uh, removing it here real quick. Um, I, I don't know if the video catches it or not because I sped the video up. But, um, I uh, eventually took sanding pad off and just used the the pad that is underneath sandpaper. Uh, but you can't really see it too well right there. Um, you kind of see it, but it had a nice little shine to it. Here in a little bit, you'll see a nice uh, an, a better view at it with with a better shine. But yeah, I just I just applied a you know liberal coat of this and just buffed it out with the palm sander. You could probably buff it out by hand, but just easier with the palm sander. Just go to town. If you can see it on the camera, uh, but that's a pretty good shine. I mean, I'm pretty happy with that. I like I said, I do see some micro scratches. I think I could have went a step up with the steel wool, or maybe even used like a uh, 2,000 grit sandpaper, and would have been just fine. So once I had all the sanding and buffing complete, uh, went ahead and started putting these together. Um, it was a little weary about not clamping these two pieces together and just holding them because they were it was pretty slippery uh, with that wax on there it was pretty slick but but it worked out pretty good so here i'm just uh i'm just tacking them on with some real thin brad nails <clears throat> just to hold it in place so i can uh, sink a couple screws uh, just marking the height where i want to put them with a razor blade uh, just like because you can barely see the notch and I actually covered it up slightly where it was where the you know the shelf goes and that shelf's about three and a half inches down. It all depends on what you're hanging, but that seemed to be the perfect height with uh, what I was hanging from it. And just check my measurements there. And here I am drilling. <coughs> and this <laughs> this was really hard. Um, so I actually broke a bit off in one of these. Had to drill a new hole. But I did countersink these. And you can see there's a countersink bit at the end of the drill bit there and countersink them so that way you know it didn't interfere with when, when you hung it on the wall and just uh, finding center here with a ruler on this little shelf and using a mechanical pencil to just do a little light mark and using a scratch all to uh, create a little starting point for the drill bit so I could uh, mount the hook and I just put a flag on the drill bit so I didn't go too deep and then put the uh, brass hook in there and I was going to paint the brass hook but uh, it seemed to look pretty good against that wood yeah, did this to all three pieces, didn't film all three but I did do it to all three and this wood's pretty hard um, as I said previously I, I, you have to be careful drilling into mahogany and then I just put the picture hangers on, pretty just standard picture hangers, and uh, put two little rubber feet at the bottom of, uh, on the back side of the bottom of all three of these, just to kind of keep it kind of snug against the wall and flush and doesn't move around too much. They're really nice to use with, you know, pictures and whatnot, especially if you have OCD. <laughs> but, so yeah, that's pretty much it. That's that's the end of the project. Stay tuned for just a little bit. You'll see some still pics of some real better pictures of the finished product. So yeah, just to recap, we did uh, about five coats of shellac and denatured alcohol. And in between each coat, I cut back the shellac with some more denatured alcohol. And then on the very last step, rubbed it down or scuffed it down with some steel wool, with some high fine steel wool, and then applied a wax finish to it and buffed it out, and then put it all together, and here we are. And I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and follow me on all social media, Twitter, Facebook, all that good stuff. And yeah, here you go, here's the finished product. And once again, thank you very much, David Pichito, for sharing your finish idea on YouTube. I really appreciate it. Hope you guys enjoyed. Until next time, we'll see you later.